So now that Visual Studio 2022 is has been out for a while, um, it's been a couple of releases, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Xamarin Forms project. Now, this is going to be a basic project. It's nothing fancy. I'm just going to create something super simple. So we go ahead and we select mobile app. For Xamarin Forms, you can also do that from here. Um, I believe if you go to mobile, um, it'll pop up. Right? So we want a mobile app. Um, for the purpose of this project, I'm going to be using C Sharp. And I'm just going to call it the counter app. And we're just going to be using Android and it's just going to be a blank uh, project. Click create. Okay, there we go. And we have our basic Android project. So I'm going to build that just to make sure everything is all working. Okay, there it's built. Now, the first thing you have to do when publishing your app is that you want to make sure that it's in release mode. So we're just gonna go up here and change it to release mode. Of course, it's gonna have cause another build. I'm assuming uh, based on what I've based on where we're starting from, you're going to build your app. It's going to be awesome, amazing. And let's just assume that the app has been built if you're following along. And what we're going to focus here on is just releasing this counter app that we've created with no functionality. So let's go in here, let's go to properties, and we'll go to our Android manifest. <clears throat> And right now it's called com.companyname.counterapp. So I'm gonna enter in my company name here. So flex pay, okay, everything else can stay the same. Save that. And then if we go to Android options, you see how it says use fast deployment. So we're gonna remove that, okay. Fast deployment, you can't actually publish um, when you have fast deployment enabled. And then down here, it's got SDK assemblies only set up. So we'll do run another build now just to make sure everything is copacetic. Great. So the reason why you want to do a build before you kind of start this process is because ultimately the process is going to run a build. So you just want to make sure that everything is working properly before you even go down the path of, of publishing. So the next thing we're going to do now is going to right click and we are going to create an archive. We're going to archive this. Okay. So let's click on archive. And this is going to take you into this archive view, and it's going to package uh, this uh, this um, file. There we go. But there's an issue here that we have um, in the Play Store. Android uh, um, publishing requires actually a different format. So why don't we go back and let's fix that format here. Um, so over here where it says Android package format, it's got APK. Let's go ahead and let's change that to bundle. Okay. okay. So what we've done thus far is we've created that, that APK and this APK actually, if I open up the folder, there it is right there. And you can actually share this. Now you do have to sign it people, you know, for people to be able to sideload it depending on the configuration they have, the security they have on their machine. But the APK, APK is the typical way that for just regular sideloading um, that apps are shared. That's why I wanted to go through and 
show you that quickly. So now that we've changed it to an AAV, uh, which is called a bundle, we will now archive again. This is now archiving um, the app bundle. AAV, I think, stands for Android App Bundle. But don't quote me on that. So as you can see, it's doing a build now before it packages it. This is what we were talking about uh, previously. If you're, if the build failed, this would fail. Great, so now we have our AAB set up and we're now going to right click that, I'm sorry, go over here, down here, and we're now gonna click on distribute, okay? So now when you click on distribute, the first thing we're gonna actually do is we're gonna create an ad hoc, um, ad hoc distribution that we will take and basically manually upload into the, uh, the Android store. This is because once you do that, um, I believe, I'm not sure, but I, I believe that it basically later on when you try to publish through or deploy through Visual Studio, it will use the, the um, app package name, right? So that com.flexbay.counter app in order to identify and publish to the right um, release. And we'll show that. Um, uh, but the initial release will actually, it, there's no real linkage between Visual Studio and what you're trying to do. Uh, so there's no way for it to actually figure out where it's supposed to go. So let's go ahead and let's create an ad hoc. So when you create an ad hoc, um, when you go into the ad hoc, first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to create a certificate. So we click on this, we're gonna enter the certificate name. So this is gonna be called counter store, give it a password, whatever you want. and then give it a name. So for the name, add some fields to the certificate. So over here, I'm gonna do flex pay and T and I'm just gonna put US, okay? And now we've created this cert. And so this is the cert that we're going to use. Now we're gonna save the, the um, it's gonna actually now sign and save this, um, this cert, uh, I'm sorry, this um, this um, app bundle, I'm gonna just save it to a folder location on my machine. So now it's signing, I enter my password. Great, and now we're all set. Okay, so the next thing we now need to do is we're actually gonna open up the Google Play Store, the Google Play Console here. Let's just open it. I'm gonna drag it over here. And we are actually now going to create a new app, the app that we're going to use for this. Okay, so let's create an app and let's call it the counter, counter, demo, okay, and it's obviously an app and it's gonna be free. We're not gonna actually make this um, available in the store. So this is really just internal. Great, so now we've created this counter app and we're in the app right now. And now we're gonna go over here to production, right? So when you click into production, over here on the right, you see this thing that says create new release. So we're gonna create a new release for this app. And then that's going to open this up. And you see here, it's looking for you to 
put an app bundle in here, right? So this app has no bundle. So let's go ahead and let's um, take this file that I just added, the com.flexbay.counter app. I want to drag it on here. So as you can see, it's going to generate an app signing key. Now it's uploading it. And there you have it. So the app has been uploaded um, and properly associated. And I'm going to just call the release one. And now I can save it. And basically, I have my bundle fully signed in the App Store. And that's the fastest way to get your app deployed to the App Store. Now, once you have got this up and the release is fully published and everything, there's a couple of things that you can then do to allow Visual Studio to be linked to the deployment that you're trying to do. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is over here, once you create the app, if you now look at the app, notice that the, the app package name is tied to the app, right? So this is a way in, in future cases for Visual Studio to be able to quickly uh, deploy. Uh, once this is published, then future versions will go into draft. There can only be one version in draft. It will not overwrite anything. Um, so once this is published, then you know, from Visual Studio, you will now be able to publish directly um, into draft uh, for the specific applications. Now, how do you do that, right? So it really starts with API access. So you go over to API access, um, and it doesn't really matter how you get there, but you're actually going to go to your GCP console. Um, so regardless of which of these, of any of these that you link, each one of these OAuth clients ultimately links back to Visual Studio. And honestly, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can just use one because again, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's really just a linkage that you create between the app Visual Studio and your Google Play services so that Visual Studio can act on your behalf as it relates to publishing your apps to the app store. So I don't think you need to have one of these for every single app. Maybe you do, but let's just go with that for now. But once you go into your console here, basically you see how it says like integrations, right? So essentially you're gonna click on create credentials, click on OAuth client. You're gonna select the application type of desktop app. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna leave it as desktop client three, but really it could, for example, be Visual Studio. Actually, I just change it 2022. So I just set that up. Say okay, and then that's going to create a client ID and a client secret for um, you know for you to hook into Visual Studio and connect later on, right? Um, and then on the Visual Studio side, what you would have to do is see how I have this guy right here. Let's go ahead and let's actually change this to go to manifest. And we're gonna, this is gonna be version two. I'm gonna call this 1.2, just so we have a different version. Right. Then we're gonna create another archive. Right, great. So now I have our new archive. Now we're gonna distribute it. And this time we're gonna go with Google Play. We're not gonna go with the ad hoc. And we're going to use the same signing identity, counter store, continue. And then we're going to use, actually, let's create a new API access. Okay, so we click create a new API access. And then it's going to see how it's asking for client ID, client secret. 
So we are going to go over here and we're using Visual Studio 2022 for this particular integration. And over here on the right, here's the client ID. So we're going to copy that, paste that here. And then over here, we have the client secret. We're going to copy that, place that here. And then just give it some kind of name. Um, Backables. I'm sorry. Um, counter. Okay. Now we're going to register that. And when we register, it's going to bring us here. And we actually have to sign in. Continue. Continue. That's done. Take this out of the way. Minimize this. Come back here. You see, counter integration has been added. Select counter integration. And then we're going to click continue. It's going to go through this again. And we now click on production. So look at that. <clears throat> See what that says? It says there's an existing draft release for this track. Please use Google Play Console to complete the rollout process before uploading the new release. And that's um, what happens. So basically, the, um, because in production, this is going to get, there's already something that we created and it hasn't been published. Because it hasn't been published, um, we can't publish this. Let's try beta, right? So this is now going to go into the beta track for this application. We click on upload, and we sign it. I mean, we enter the signing password. So as you can see, it's now uploading. Why is it uploading? Because it knows it, it's found the application on my uh, in my console that maps to uh, this ID. If I hadn't published anything, this wouldn't work. It would fail because it would say, hey, um, you have to publish first. So you have to, first of all, use that ad hoc to publish. Then you can um, do what I'm doing here. And in production, I did this for beta, but in production, it would work the same way. Once you publish, once you'll be able to upload. So let's go over here and let's see how this is played out. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Let's go back here. Um, let's go to all apps. And I believe we're looking at the counter app. Okay, so now we're here. And if we go to production and I go to my releases, you see I have one release. If I edit that release, that's the version 1.0 version that we created. But let's see what happens when we go to testing. Right? So let's look at the testing release. So over here, I have release two in testing. And now let's edit this release and see what happens. And as you can see, my app bundle version two, 1.2, two has been added here. And it's done that all by itself. Visual Studio has done that all by itself without me doing anything. So this is how you can very quickly and easily publish from your uh, publish, as you see, very simple apps, the very complicated apps from your Android, um, uh, from Visual Studio using an Android project onto the Google Play Store, either for testing or for production. This will work the same. Step one is always publish a version manually. And then once a version is manually published, then the package name is going to be associated with the app that you've created in the app store, in the app store. And then once that is done, then you can automatically publish from Visual Studio directly into the Google Play Store with no issues. If this uh, video has been helpful to you, like, subscribe, and have a pleasant day. Thank you.